I think I'm on take 10 right now for doing this video. Definitely not something that's in my wheelhouse or that I'm used to, but giving it a shot. Uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I really truly miss all of you, uh, my friends and brothers and sisters in Christ, and I'm, yeah, a bit sad that we can't meet. Uh, normally I meet with those of you at Edgewood and Touchmark every Thursday, and I so look forward to those times of getting together with you and you all bless me, I think, way more than I bless you. So I want you to know that I miss you. And then I miss all the people on Sunday morning at Helena Alliance Church. I miss our Sunday school together, going over the Sermon on the Mount. And I miss our worship and fellowship time together after Sunday school. So I'm sending out this video, um, hopefully as a means of encouragement I know that we're all going through these unprecedented times uh, together. It's definitely not easy. Uh, and here's something that I've been thinking about. Um, perhaps like you, you use mnemonic devices to remember things. Uh, my mind works like that as well. Someone said, uh, you're left-handed, but at least you're in your right mind. And I, I have to agree with them. but. I don't know if it's because I'm left-handed or not that I think like this, but we all use acronyms and other mnemonic devices to remember things. Um, some of you may be remembering, uh, maybe learned in school the acronym HOMES to remember the Great Lakes, Lake Huron, Lake Ontario, Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, and Lake Superior. Or maybe you uh, learned other Mnemonic devices to remember things. Um, I always remember Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians by saying General Electric Power Company or Gentiles Eat Pork Chops, G-E-P-C, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Another acronym that I learned as a kid, and maybe some of you learned this from your Sunday school teacher or from your parents, was the acronym JOY, J-O-Y. And I don't know if it was my mom or a Sunday school teacher that said that is the definition and the source of joy. J, Jesus. Looking to him, our first love. Loving Jesus with all of our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our strength. You know, another acronym that I think is very apropos for these times is, is busy. Or maybe the lack of being busy, which can be a good thing. Someone said busy, B-U-S-Y, can be Satan's acronym for being under Satan's yoke. And sometimes, if we're honest, we can get so busy or so distracted in life that we don't spend time with our Savior, with our Creator, with hopefully our, our best friend. And what a great time right now as we're going through this unprecedented, uncertain time in our world to spend time with Jesus. It's almost like an assignment where we have no excuse not to spend time with Jesus. Some of us can't even go to work or our hours have been drastically cut. And so we can just be still, as the psalmist said, and know that he is God. We can just sit in a room with our Bible and our thoughts and I think that is so healthy. Some of the verses that I've been just clinging to during these times, one is Isaiah 41.10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be discouraged, for I am your God. 
I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And I think Jesus said that he will never leave me or forsake me, that he will be with me to the very end of the age, that he is with me right now, even though I can't see him. And do you remember what he told Thomas? He said, Thomas, blessed are you because you've seen me and believe, but more blessed are those who have never seen me and yet still believe. I can't see Jesus right now. I can't reach out and touch him. He's not palpable or tangible, but I believe that he is with you and me, his children, during these times. None of this takes him by surprise. He's with us and he cares for us. And he says, do not fear for I am with you. Even though I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, whatever that means, getting sickness, losing a job, not being able to meet life, maybe not returning back to normal for a long, long time, whatever that means, going through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. What a comfort to know that Jesus is with us. And I'm encouraging myself, just as I'm encouraging you, my friends and brothers and sisters, to just take this time where maybe we are forced not to go into work or we're forced to change up life. We're forced to lay low. Take this time to just spend quality time in communion, in fellowship with our God, with our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, that's J. What's the second letter stand for? Well, pretty rhetorical question, but O, and I'm sure you've already guessed this, others. One of the ways we receive joy, one of the ways we get joy is by not only looking to our own interest, but actually looking to the interest of others and actually putting their interest ahead of our own. Dr. Carl Menninger was a famous psychiatrist and was giving a lecture on mental health. And someone asked him, Dr. Menninger, if you suspected someone was on the brink of a nervous breakdown, what advice would you give them? And most of the listeners suspected that Dr. Menninger would say, set up an appointment with a psychiatrist right away. But to their amazement, his reply was, if someone was about ready to have a nervous breakdown, I would tell them, lock your house up, go outside, cross the tracks, find someone in need, and help them. And isn't that true? I mean, when we help other people, we ourselves are filled with joy. It seems like these times bring out the best and the worst in people. People going to Costco and buying a year's worth supply of toilet paper while the person behind them has nothing. And you think, what's going on? And yet, I think all of us are, are tempted right now to be in that grip of fear and think about ourselves. But I know that true joy comes when we put others' interests ahead of our own. And so you think, well, how can I help someone when I'm not even supposed to get out of the house or leave my workplace or gather with more than 10 people? But there's always someone that you can call. There's always someone that you can write a letter to. Maybe for those few people that you do come into contact with in the dining hall at Touchmark or at Edgewood or someone that you pass in the hallway or someone at work, you can encourage them. 
someone said, a pat on the back, though only a few inches removed from a kick in the pants, does wonders for a person. And isn't that true? Mark Twain said that he could live for a whole month on one compliment. Someone said, a doc, uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, another saying could be a compliment a day keeps depression away. So go out and compliment someone, encourage someone, help someone, especially during these times when there's so much sadness and so much depression and discouragement. Ask God, God, what are some ways that I can be your hands and your feet right now during these difficult times? And finally, why? J-O-Y. Jesus, others, you. I think one of the things depression feeds off of is these negative thoughts that no one cares what you're going through. No one's aware what you're going through. You're all alone. And that's not true. And I have to remind myself of that all the time. Peter said, cast all of your cares upon him because he cares for you. You are God's child and he loves you dearly and he cares about you. And there's nothing that you're going through right now that he's not aware of. He knows every thought that you've had, even every word that you say before it's on your tongue. David says he's familiar with all of our ways. He knows when we sit and when we rise. He perceives our, our thoughts from afar. So God cares deeply about you. And I want you to know that. At Touchmark and at Edgewood, one of the songs that we sing all the time is, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And over and over again, the Bible says that God loves us. It says that he rejoices over us with singing, that he delights in us, that he quiets us with his love. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Paul said, that it's Christ who lives in him, and it's no longer he who lives, but it's Christ who lives through him, this Christ who died for him and loves him, Galatians 2.20. So know that God loves you, and secondly, know that there are other people who deeply care about you and are concerned about you. And I hope uh, that I am one of them. I think about you all the time, what you must be going through. Um, I think about those of you in my Sunday school, those of you at Touchmark and at Edgewood. Uh, thanks for being a good friend to, to my family and, and to me. And, and I hope I'm a good friend to you. I think a good friend is someone who brings us closer to Jesus. And there are other people who care about you too. Uh, hopefully you have kids or parents who love you and care about you or a neighbor who loves you, a colleague who does care about you. So don't let those lies from the enemy uh, get you down, that you're all alone, that no one cares, no one's concerned about you. So I, I hope you find this little devotional encouraging. Um, I hope to get better as the uh, days come in doing these. Um, and hopefully it won't be long before we can get back to meeting together. So I, I miss you. I hope you are doing well. And God bless you.